Good morning, everyone. It is good to welcome you this morning, and I, how awesome it is we can gather in our yard. And I know we look a little different with our our faces covered up, but I, but I thank you for helping others as you as you do that. And um, it is good that we can gather together and be be all together with worship. Um, this morning, just a couple of logistics. Uh, there are communion elements, and if you haven't received yours yet, um, if you raise your hand, Happy Ramp has, has those, and we'll make sure that you get them. We have gluten-free and regular, so um, to make sure everyone gets what they need. And so just make sure that um, we know that you need those. And uh, we also have face masks if anybody needed one of those, so we're, we're covered on all ends. So we are glad to see you this morning, and I ask that we center our hearts and our minds and our spirits as we hear the psalm from Psalm 96. This psalm says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. As we continue to center our hearts with Amy's music this morning. prayer this morning there's a couple of um, things that we can keep in our prayers uh, I ask that you keep Mike Cavanaugh and his family in prayer as he lost his brother um, this past week also Ben Harrison a brother-in-law and Carol is facing some um, pretty serious health issues and so please keep them in your prayers as well um, and others that are, are facing illnesses and are continuing to take treatments for those and so as you um, hear of folks and they come on the prayer chain, just remember to keep everyone um, in our prayers this morning. Let us go to the Lord as we pray together. Lord God, we thank you so much that we can gather together. We thank you that you are over all things and in the midst of a season that is so strange, you are in it. You are with us. You have not abandoned us. And so we thank you, Lord God, that you are with us today. We thank you that you are, remind us in the Psalms that we are to sing a new song to you each and every day, that we need to praise you, and we need to um, give you our thanksgivings and to greet each day with those things that we are thankful for, 
and many times through the day to, to praise you, for you are over all things, and you will not leave us alone. We thank you so much, God, that we, your faithfulness is forever, that we can count on you, that there are new mercies every morning. And so we thank you, God, for the new mercies. We thank you for the light breeze that blows and the birds that are singing in the trees, for shade of the trees to keep the sun away from us. We thank you, Lord, for all that you provide. We thank you that, that even though the seasons are rough, you are in them. You know, you are present with us. So we lift our concerns to you this morning, Lord, those that are in our hearts, those folks that I have mentioned, plus others, God, that, that need your healing touch, that need to feel your um, comfort in your arms and your love wrapped around them. Lord, we offer those folks to you this morning. And God, we, we are mindful of this nation. We thank you for our nation. We pray for our nation, Lord, as we need your healing hand upon us. And so, God, we continue to pray for the healing of our nation, for people to come before you and to put you first and to repent of their sins so that we can be a nation under God. So, Lord God, we lift our nation to you and, and, um, and just pray for our nation this morning. So God, as we pause for a minute, few minutes, we offer our own prayers to you this morning. Lord God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Those that we speak and those that are in our hearts, we thank you that we hear our you hear our prayers. And Lord, help us to be good listeners, to sometimes just pause to listen to what you may have to impart to us. So God, we give you thanks for this morning, for this brand new day. We thank you for the wonder that we have in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Amy. I've been set free. My chains are gone. I've been set free by God's amazing grace. That is a wonderful song. We have been tra traveling through James. So if you've been watching online, we've been um, traveling through the, through the book of James. And if you haven't been, that, that I will just kind of catch you up and encourage you to read in the book of James because the book of James has a lot to give to us. And um, it's a, a challenge for the church. And so James kind of covers various things. It reminds us to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. It tells us that um, faith without works is dead. And so that we need to um, not just believe, but we need to follow what the word has told us to do. So faith without works is dead. And so we are reminded in James about that. Also reminded about our words, that words have great power. They can be encouraging, they can lift someone up, or they can crush a person's spirit and actually do a lot of damage. And so we are reminded about our words. Let our words be few is, is in a song um, uh, by Rebecca St. James, Let My Words Be Few. But we are reminded in the book of James that even as we go to prayer, we need to be considerate of who God is. The wonder of God and the awesome nature of God and who he is as we enter prayer, not just to babble to God, but to give time to respect and to honor and glorify God and, and to be mindful of who he is. And then be mindful of the words that we use with one another, the words that we can use um, so ever quickly when we type emails or texts or Twitters or whatever we do with the social media. It's really easy to hit send and not pause to see what we have written. Once those words are out there, they, do, they can either be encouraging or do damage. So James reminds us, church, be careful about what it is you say and what words you say. And then it, it also tells us that we need to get along. Not only outside of the church, but within the church, we need to get, we need to get along. And today's message continues that, that spot about the importance of getting along with, with one another and how important that is. And so today we um, hear this scripture from chapter five, for part of chapter five, beginning with verse seven. It says, meanwhile, friends, wait patiently for the master's arrival. You see, farmers do this all the time, waiting for their valuable crops to mature patiently, letting the rain do its slow but sure work. Be patient like that. Stay steady and strong. The master could arrive at any time. Friends, don't complain about each other. A far greater complaint could be lodged against you. The judge is standing just around the corner. Take the old prophets as your mentors. They put up with anything, went through everything, and never once quit, all the time honoring God. What a gift life is to those who stay the course. You've heard, of course, of Job staying power, and you know how God brought it all together for him at the end. That's because God cares right down to the last detail. And since you know that he cares, let your language show it. Don't add words like, I swear to God, to your own words. Don't show your impatience by concocting oaths to hurry up God. Just say yes or no. Just say what is true. That way your language can't be used against you. Are you hurting? Pray. Do you feel great? Sing. Are you sick? Call the church leaders together to pray and anoint you with oil in the name of the master. Believing prayer will heal you and Jesus will put you on your feet. And if you've sinned, you'll be forgiven, healed inside and out. Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. The prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. Elijah, for instance, human just like us, prayed hard that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't. Not a drop for three and a half years. Then he prayed that it would rain, and it did. The showers came, and everything started growing again. My dear friends, if you know people who have wandered off from God's truth, don't write them off. Go after them, get them back, and you will have rescued precious lives from destruction and prevented an epidemic of wandering away from God. 
here ends the reading of the scriptures. We thank, we thank the Lord. And so today we look at this, this scripture from James that gives us very exact things to think about. First of all, it talks about patience more than once. More than once, right in the very beginning, be patient. Wait for God. And part of this is talking about like there will, there will be suffering, but don't get patient. Wait for God. Trust in the Lord that, that the Lord is there, that the, in God's timing things will, will be okay. And so several times you hear, be patient. Be patient. And throughout James, we, we read about being patient. Patience isn't always easy. Patience is not easy, but we are reminded that that is what we need to do. And then we are reminded about not complaining within the church, outside of the church, in the church. Don't complain about each other. Don't complain about each other. And there's other scripture that tells us that if you have something against another person, you should go to that person and talk to them with kindness and humility and talk to them and, and not just complain. And so don't complain about each other. A far greater complaint could be lodged against you. So we are reminded in James, don't, don't be complaining, it's destructive. And so I was thinking as I entitled the, ser the, the sermon, um, I'm not sure how, how much up you are on the, the characters of the Muppets or Sesame Street, but perhaps you had children that were in that era of Sesame Street, or maybe you were in the era of Sesame Street. And there's certain characters, you know, there's just certain characters that you just like. You like Cookie Monster because he just loves cookies, and that who doesn't love cookies, so you kind of fall in love with Cookie Monster. He's blue and fuzzy. But there's another character on Sesame Street entitled The Grouch. And that would be Oscar. And Oscar turned out to originally he was orange and then he became green. I don't remember him ever being orange, but that's what I learned as I was looking up Oscar. Um, and Oscar lived in a garbage can. He loved trash and he didn't like to be bothered about and he definitely could complain. That was part of his, that was part of his MO. And so um, he even had an anthem and it was called the Grouch Anthem. And we can't sing it, but I just thought I would share the words because the words are pretty good and it goes right along with this not complaining stuff. It says, grouches of the world unite. Stand up for your grouchy rights. Don't let the sunshine spoil your rain. Just stand up and complain. Let this be the grouch's cause. Point out everybody's flaws. Something is wrong with everything except the way I sing. And if you listen to Oscar singing, his singing voice leaves you just a little bit to be desired. So anyway, that is Oscar's um, Oscar's anthem. However, that isn't what we want to proclaim or be like. And so we just need, James is reminding us, come on church, let us not be those the people that are complaining. Let us not look like Oscar's group of grouches, but let us look different than that and we're expected to look differently. It also says, take a look at all the mentors in the Bible. Take a look at the mentors in the Bible. Take a look at how how sometimes they went through long, long seasons to get where they were going. How long those seasons were that they didn't just happen upon it to be immediately fixed. Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years. God provided them with everything. But it didn't, wasn't a 40-year journey. And yet they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And we are reminded to look at those. Look at Elijah his faith and his, his prayers and his belief in God. Look at Job, and if you read the, the book of Job and the things that Job went through, be patient. James is reminding us to be patient. Look at these mentors in the Bible. Look at them and see how they can encourage your life and build your life. And so there's a reminder to us that we need to do that. Then we are to challenge God. You know, Lord, if you just do X, Y, or Z, and we can, you know, have it, and we bargain with God, we're not supposed to concoct reasons and different things for God. That we need to be patient. Patient again. Don't be impatient, but be patient. And then not to swear, I swear to God. It said don't do that. 
it could bring bad things against you and so you don't want to use improper language as you're talking about God and so are praying to God just it James tells us just say what is true say yes say no say what is true and that way your language can't be used against you and so we we are reminded about doing that are you hurting you know, this, is, this season is upside down, and I think it, it affects every single person in one way or the other. It isn't, it isn't um, anything we've experienced in our lifetimes, or maybe ever. And so it puts us in crazy places, and um, sometimes it creates us just to be um, sad inside, stressed inside, all sorts of things happen inside with this, the way everything is. And so it said, are you hurting? Pray. Pray. When you're hurting, pray. Um, I, I know that there's great help as, as we come to church and um, have come the last couple of Sundays just to put on music that is singing praises to the Lord and is singing songs that lift up God. And those are very powerful in calming your spirit. You know, putting, putting, maybe it's music or maybe it's your favorite scriptures, but it's also being in prayer. Also reminds us that when we feel great, great to sing. Now, we can't sing outside but with each other, but we can definitely sing in our own houses and we can sing in our cars and showers. This is a great shower time. And we can sing wherever others aren't, I guess. And so sing. Then it says, are you sick? Call the church leaders together to pray and anoint you with oil. You know, we have a wonderful prayer chain where that connects people together to know that people need prayer. And prayer is so powerful and we need to be reminded to pray for one another and to lift our prayers and um, that that believing prayer will heal you. Believing that prayer will heal you and that Jesus will put you back on your feet so that's part of our faith part of our faith and part of your faith is to confess our sins to one another we don't always want to admit that we have any sins or that we're wrong or that we need to confess anything but it says confess your sins to one another so you can live together whole and healed and so that's being able to to say i'm sorry to to admit when you're wrong and and to um, do those things so that we can be whole together and so James just has strong words to tell us. Strong words to tell us. Also says we should, it should matter to us about people who have left God, who, are, who used to have a really close faith with the Lord, and they, they believed in God, they accepted Jesus as their Savior, but then they have wandered away. That those folks should be close to our hearts, that we should pray and we should... Can, and we should um, reach out to them, not just forget about them, so that we will have rescued precious lives from destruction and prevented an epidemic of wandering away from God. And it seems like our nation is in an epidemic of wandering away from God already. And so how important praying for others and the people we see and the people we know that perhaps have left the Lord. And so James is this, this powerful book of of telling us about life and how to live and expectations that God has from us. And and so I want to encourage you that that can be a wonderful study for your own devotions just to be in, just to read and study the book of James. And um, if you're a person who plugs into the YouVersion Bible to read devotions every, every um, it's an app on your phone or your computer or whatever, um, Francis Chan has a Bible plan on James that is very excellent. And so I just encourage you um, to continue as, as you um, go with your week to look at James. Let us, let us pray. Lord God, we sometimes fail you miserably. We don't set out to fail you. It, it happens. Our own thoughts, our own wants, our own desires, and sometimes just the culture that is around us causes us to, to not have you first in our lives, causes us to dis dismiss things that would really bring us a, a greater joy if we would find them again. 
And so, Lord, lead us, help us. Help us in um, forgiving those that may have hurt us or in some way. Help us, Lord, to, to reach out to others in the ways that we can during this season. And God, we thank you that you are always with us, that you never abandon us. And we thank you once again that your grace is enough. Your grace is enough to cover us for when the times that we fall and the times that we fail, the times that we, we just totally miss the mark. And yet you're still there. Your grace is still there to wash us clean, to, to give us life, to forgive us. And so, Lord, this morning as we prepare for communion, we just pray that you will accept our confessions of sin to you, that you will accept them, that you will forgive us for ways that we have failed you even this day that you will guide us and help us to have a stronger relationship with you, a personal relationship with you. Lord, protect us. As Psalm 91 tells us, protect us. May we, be high, may we dwell under your wings. Guide us with wisdom in every single thing that we do. Be with our church family, Lord, wherever they are, and watch over them, those that are traveling, those that are away from us. We just pray that you watch over them. And so, God, we offer everything to you and put it in your hands. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. this morning we have different kinds of communion so I wanted it to be hands-free so that it was as clean for you or hands-free that doesn't make any sense I wanted it to be such that it was sealed and, and it was safe for you to have it and so what we ordered um, part of what we ordered came and part of what we ordered did not so you get, some of you have goldfish and so you can take on um, a goldfish or so as your bread and that will be your bread this morning take the rest of your goldfish home with you um, and then there are there are juice um, for you. And if somebody didn't get communion, let us. If you raise your hand, we'll make sure you got some. And so there's there's gluten free as well, as I mentioned. And so we will be doing the the communion um, together. So hear these words: On the night of your betrayal, Lord Jesus, you took bread, you blessed it, and you broke it. And you gave it to your disciples and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You did the same with the cup after the supper, saying, This is my cup poured out. And it is the new covenant in my blood. Blessed Trinity, in remembrance of all you have done to save us, we offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on these gifts. Make them through us. Christ's body alive in the world. Abba, Father, let your kingdom come. Come, Lord Jesus, be our daily bread. Holy Spirit, send us to the world. Holy, blessed Trinity, one God forever. And so this morning, um, as, we, as we break the bread and we are reminded of Jesus' body that is broken and given for each one of us, I invite you to take your, your bread this morning and partake of it, remembering that Jesus' blood, body has been given for you.
Likewise, the cup was given and shared with the disciples as a reminder of the new covenant of Jesus Christ. His blood has been shed, shed excuse me, for each one of you. So now take the, the juice in remembrance of him and his gift given to you. So now as we go from this place, go knowing that you are loved, unconditionally loved, that you know, the grace that God has for each one of you flows freely. There is enough. There is enough of his grace to cover you. So go knowing that you have covered, have been covered. And go knowing that Jesus' love for us is that amazing grace with his blood and, and body given for us. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we close, Amy will play for us this morning.